So a vector is defined by two things, the length or magnitude of the vector and the direction, which way it's pointing in. So it's a little bit strange that up till this point, when we talk about vectors, we don't talk much about its magnitude and its direction. Instead, we talk about how far in the I component it's moving. In this case, three units in the I direction and three units in the J direction. Put those two ideas together and we have component form, 3i plus 3j. Now it doesn't matter which way we move this vector, we can describe it using the i and the j component. But there is another way of describing a vector as well, and that's in polar form. Okay, so polar form, it's very, very straightforward. You just need to find the magnitude of the vector. It right now has a magnitude of 3.66. And the other thing that you need is the angle of the vector. Let's move to a slightly easier one at the moment. Uh, this one right here, 53.73. So you put those two pieces of information together and you have this polar form. Now, these are two equivalent ways of talking about the same vector. This vector is 2.7i plus 3.68j in component form, but it is also 4.56 53.73 degrees in polar form. Just spend a little bit of time. If we make it longer, we can see our polar form. There's our magnitude, 10.52, our angle, 33.61. As I rotate this around, past the 90 degrees, you can see my angle. It's still starting off from the positive direction of the x-axis. So we're starting along here and then we're measuring there. Until we get all the way around to here, where we have, let's stop there, we have 4.97 as our magnitude and 172.85 degrees. Now, you would think once we go past the horizontal that we're going to end up with like 185 degrees or something like this. Let's go, let's shoot through here. Whoa, what happened? We started measuring the angle by moving backwards around from that positive direction of the x-axis. All right, so negative 146 degrees by measuring backwards there. Okay, if we go around here, going around, going around, going around, you can see my angle's getting quite small here, but again, I'm measuring from the positive direction of the x-axis and it's negative 23 degrees until we come all the way around and we're back to the start again positive angles from 0 to 180 and then once we go around here we start using negative angles again. All right so that is polar form a magnitude and a direction and the direction is based on the positive direction of the x-axis. Now that we understand what polar form is let's convert from component form to polar form mathematically and then convert from uh, polar form to component form mathematically. All right, so here we are, we're gonna convert this to polar form. The first step is always, always, always to draw a picture. So I'm gonna draw in a convenient sort of X and Y axis here, three I, one, two, three, and negative four J, one, two, three, four, and that is the vector I'm dealing with. Now to convert to polar form, I need two things. I need the magnitude, which is easy enough. So you've done that lots before. I'm not gonna show you how to find the magnitude of a vector. The other thing we need is this angle right here. And to do that, you're gonna to have to cast your mind back to doing some trigonometry, Sokotoa type stuff maybe. This particular one, we have 10 theta equals, now opposite side. Now the opposite side is our J component here, four over the adjacent side, which is the one next door, four over three. And then you solve for theta. Find the answer. And so I found the answer, 53.13 degrees, but then think. You've got to stop and think about what the angle means. So in this case, we don't want to use positive 53.13. Because we're in this quadrant of the four quadrants, because we're in this one right here, we've got a negative angle. So we finish off by saying u is equal to magnitude five and negative 53.13. This is why drawing a picture is so important. 
Some people try to do this without drawing the picture and then they end up getting the angle wrong or something like that. If you draw the picture, you won't get the angle wrong. All right, what about if you're going the other way? All right, so here's our next question waiting for us. Convert this vector in polar form into component form. So the first thing to do should be to draw a picture. So we're gonna draw a picture here, just a rough eight, 150 degrees. So it has a magnitude of eight and it's 150 degrees. You start from the positive direction of the x-axis and move 150 degrees that way. Okay, you always start from here, go that way. If it's negative, you go the other way. So that's 150 degrees there. And this has a magnitude of eight. Now, how are we gonna find the I component, how long that is, and how are we gonna find that the J component? Now, you can actually use trigonometry here again, the old Sokotoa thing, but I am gonna show you a neat little formula for getting this done because it's so important to be able to convert from polar form to component form very, very quickly. Okay, there is our very fast formula for getting this done. To move to component form, we do the magnitude, so in this example, the magnitude is eight, cos, the angle, now there's no need to try to find like the small angle here or anything, just use the angle. If the angle's negative, use a negative angle. If the angle's positive, use a positive angle. If it's 150 degrees, use 150 degrees. 150 degrees, I plus eight sine, use the angle again, J. Okay, and then you just type that into your calculator. Okay, I've got my calculator here. Make sure you are in degrees mode and we're gonna go uh, eight cos 150, and there's negative four root three i, and we're gonna go, whoops, and on our calculator again, we're gonna go eight sine, eight sine 150, and that's gonna give us four. All right, negative four root three i plus four j, important now to double check your work looking back at your picture and making sure that it makes sense so when I look at this picture I see a negative I component the vectors going that way so that makes sense sense negative 4 root 3 and I see a positive J component that also makes sense so I'm happy with what I've done there now this formula right here so so important you might want to take a moment and think, how does that formula exist? It's all about trigonometry, Sokotoa. You can take a think about how that works. Uh, but that is converting from component form to polar form and from polar form back to component form.